Let me turn over the conversation to Mike Davis um, and let him tell us where we are uh, and what's happening, some of his sense, and then he's agreed to also take some of our questions. And so if you have questions you're thinking about, uh, be ready for that. Mike Davis, as I mentioned, um, is an attorney. He was uh, Chuck Grassley's, uh, Senator Chuck Grassley's, one of his senior aides on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Mike has also clerked for uh, Chief, uh, excuse me, Justice Gorsuch. And then he had the distinction of also helping with the outside support for uh, judges uh, and um, also justices when they were nominated during the Trump era, one of the really key guys at helping uh, kind of define what the issues were and help us all stay on point. And uh, Article 3 project is his one of his uh, projects. And so, uh, Mike, if you don't mind, thank you for joining us. I know you've been on television just a few minutes ago. You've been on, on radio all day. Um, can you tell us, Mike, first, if I can set it up, last night I saw you tweet, and your tweet was like a, a, a former U.S. Supreme Court clerk like you, kind of almost stunned, it seemed, by that this happened and what the impact was and how it really mattered. Can you lay out for us what, this, what the dynamic is, what's occurred? More, more than the decision right now, we should be concerned, I think, about the the court and the integrity of the court. Can you can you talk about that to start, and then we can go you wherever you want to go with the conversation. I'm happy to have it uh, lead, please. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ed, for having me back on. And I would say that, like as you said, I clerked for Justice Gorsuch. I also worked on the confirmations for Chief Justice Roberts, Justice Alito, um, Justice Gorsuch, Justice Kavanaugh, uh, J Justice Barrett. So five of the six Republican appointed justices, and I know Justice Thomas. And Jenny pretty well. I have never seen anything like this. This is unprecedented. What has happened here? This is a draft opinion that leaked out, uh, like you said, uh, two months before the uh, result was going to be announced at the end of June. And it's very clear to me that a disgruntled Supreme Court employee leaked out this draft. And it's a narrow universe of Supreme Court employees who would have had access to, the, to this draft. I don't think it was a justice uh, at all. I, I, justices, they may disagree, but they get along very well and they understand the importance of, uh, of having trust among the justices. They can't function without trust. They have nine, there are nine Supreme Court justices. Each of them have four, sometimes five clerks, law clerks, and then they have three administrative assistants. And that's really, about the universe of people who would see these draft opinions. And why these draft opinions are so important to keep secret is you have to circulate them. You have to go back and forth with your colleagues so you can write the majority opinion, you can write the dissenting opinion, you can write the, the concurring opinions. And it's very important that these do not leak out because while, while, you have to have trust during this process. And it's just stunning this, that, that le this leaked out. I think it was a disgruntled uh, law clerk who's angry that uh, the court uh, is on the cusp of overturning Roe versus Wade and Casey. And uh, I don't know if this was a Hail Mary to, to try to get justices who may be waffling to change their votes. I think that uh, if, that's, if that was the goal, this is going to have the opposite effect of that. It's going it's gonna, uh, to make justices hunker down, and they're not going to let this radical assault on the Supreme Court's judicial independence sway them. This is this is going to backfire on whoever leaked this spectacularly. I don't know if this was just a disgruntled employee who thought, you know what, if they're going to overturn Roe, um, you know, I'm a 27 year old uh, know it all, and I and I'm just going to blow up the whole damn place. And so, who knows if that's what was driving this person? Regardless, the Chief Justice was right in uh, in announcing that he was going to have the Marshal of the Supreme Court fully investigate this. This needs to be handled by the marshal of the Supreme Court and not the political branches. Congress needs to keep its nose out of this. I was the chief counsel for nominations on the Senate Judiciary Committee for Chairman Chuck Grassley, as Ed said, and my job would have been to have oversight over the federal judiciary. Uh, the the political, branches sh political branches should stay out of this. The Judiciary Committees and the House and Senate sh should stay out of this. This should be an internal investigation by the marshal of the Supreme Court. If the executive branch needs to step in to provide additional investigative resources to the marshal. Remember, the marshal is uh, re, uh, runs the Supreme Court police, which is a, a nearly 200 member police force. So they have the resources there to investigate this. And if, if they don't, 
They can turn to the U.S. Marshal Service at the Justice Department that works very closely with the courts over the last more than a century. So those would be the most likely outside sources, but you don't want other uh, agencies sticking their nose in this thing because you don't want to set a precedent where the political branches can go into the Supreme Court and uh, meddle with their internal operations. So I think the Chief Justice is right in ordering this. They need to get to the bottom of who leaked this. I think that they will. They need to interview every single one of these employees for, for the justices um, and others, maybe the IT personnel. Uh, if, they have to if they have to take depositions, they have to take depositions. If they, if they have to take polygraphs, take polygraphs. But they need, this is an egregious leak uh, uh, and it's, it shatters trust. It will be rebuilt once they find out who did this. This has been a particularly bad year for leaks. If you remember Justice Breyer's announcement leaked out, uh, also, uh, my former boss, Justice Gorsuch, had the mass gate silliness leaked out uh, by the Supreme Court. This didn't happen in prior years. So it seems to me that there's a, a one-off rogue law clerk who is driving these leaks. And I think this one-off rogue law clerk is uh, upset that the court's going to overturn Roe versus Wade. And um, like I said, I don't know if they're this clerk is trying to change votes or just trying to burn down the house. It's, it's unclear. Uh, but anyway, that's what I... I uh, would have to say about, I mean, so the, the opinion, you know, if you, if you read Justice Alito's opinion, it's his first draft, it could change, of course, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's going to be the opinion of the court. I don't think they're going to sway any justices and it's a powerful opinion. And I'm glad that Justice Alito's writing it because he's very, very smart and he doesn't give a damn what, uh, what the public thinks about him. He's a, that's what justices, that's how justices should operate. They have lifetime tenure. They have pay protection. Their job is to do unpopular things. Uh, you know, overturning Plessy versus uh, versus Ferguson and getting rid of uh, institutionalized Jim Crow segregation, especially in public schools and Brown versus Board of Education. That wasn't popular at the time, but it had to be done. And uh, Roe versus Wade is just a it's a dumpster fire of legal precedent, and we need to get rid of it. It's it's terrible legal precedent. It's 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 not based on anything in the Constitution, as Justice Alito writes in the draft and it should be gotten rid of and it then these abortion regulations should be returned to the states and if you're in a liberal state you can go get your abortion if you're in a conservative state you're uh you know what that's how the, the democratic process works um hey um mike let me let me start before we maybe take questions from folks um you, you described and and in some ways i was uh, getting a feedback from andy schlafly earlier who was saying a lot of people are saying hey it's still a draft so, you know, worrying about what the decision is it certainly signals where we've heard a lot of the things, but um, but it's not a fake, right, Mike? I mean, we now know it, it's not a hoax in the sense that it's it's been authenticated. And I guess my question, what should what should we conservatives and Americans be wanting now? I mean, you say rebuild the trust. I just did an interview and I said, Mike, that, um, you know, when when the left was getting Obergefell, Casey, Roe v. Wade, other decisions, they thought the Supreme Court was great, you know, because they could, they didn't care what the will of the people was. They didn't care what the Democratic Republic was deciding in terms of elections or votes. They just liked the idea of big time judges making the decision. And now that it looks like there's a conservative majority, uh, more conservative majority, they're like, hey, let's, let's run down the uh, reputation of the Supreme Court. That's how it feels. Is what should we be doing or looking for or getting ourselves uh, activated to do? I think conservatives need to learn how to punch back and learn, learn how to fight. And these are important fights, right? Uh, we have these ju justices, these federal judges have lifetime tenure. They have pay protection. They're not supposed to care about the politics, but they're still humans. And they were political animals to get put on the court in the first place. That's how they got selected. So I think it's really important for conservatives to get out there on social media get out there with opinion pieces, get on TV, get on radio and defend this and punch back. Uh, you know, I'm tired of conservatives, uh, you know, taking the high road all the time. And then we, you know, we get, we get, we're on our high horses and we get knocked off our, 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 our high horses here. This is, this is a monumental decision, right? The, this is the, de the, the, the abortion industry provides the funding for the Democrat party and their operatives. They know, that if they don't have this made up bogus federal mandate for abortion, uh, then th their, their funding dries up for the Democrat party. We need to fight back. We need to 
uh, we need to be out there defending these conservative judges publicly. We need to be punching back against their attackers. Uh, we need to be telling uh, Republican senators like Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski or, who are, uh, you know, putting out these statements attacking these justices to, you know, to, to, to shove it, right? We need to be punching back. They need to, we need to stop being um, so docile on the right. We, I mean, we should do it, obviously, color within the lines, don't do anything illegal, don't do anything violent, anything like that, but be vocal, and fight back. Uh, thanks, Mike. And uh, by the way, Mike uh, Davis has been, uh, the last couple of years, he's been at our Collegians uh, Summit. We're doing it again on June 14th. If you haven't seen it, everybody, it's uh, our Collegian Summit this year. It'll be kind of half virtual with some of our uh, college students present uh, at the office in uh, Washington, D.C. So uh, look for Mike Davis there again. But he's Mike's going to stay with us. Mike, I just got a text from one of our uh, listeners. I don't know why she doesn't want to ask the question, uh, but I guess there was a, a recent um uh, Josh Hawley tweeted something uh, basically saying every senator uh, should be asked under oath and Senate uh, staff of leadership and judiciary committee about this. Um, and given the, I guess the tweet is, given the apparently coordinated nature of this hit on the court, I certainly hope every Democrat senator is ready to answer whether they saw the opinion before Politico published it and if they know who the leaker is. I guess, so that's, that's a good point, but is that the politics? That's over on the politics side is your point, right, Mike? The court needs to work over on the court side. Is that what you're saying? The Senate can do whatever they want with their own body. They need to. They need to. And I, I, I would have no problem if the the Senate investigates this. Uh, if there are people involved on the Senate side, they need to leave the Supreme Court alone. The House, the Senate, the executive branch, they need to leave the Supreme Court alone. It's a constitutionally independent body. They're perfectly equipped to handle this. Uh, this is uh, this is the first time an opinion has leaked like this. Uh, they have uh, they have processes in place to investigate this. The chief justice uh, ordered the the marshal of the Supreme Court to investigate this. If the marshal of the Supreme Court needs help, um, they can bring in the Supreme Court police who works. They, the Supreme Court police, the chief of police, and the the nearly 200 officers work for the marshal. If they need additional resources beyond that, they can deputize uh, agents from the U.S. Marshal Service or other agencies. Uh, but this needs to be. This internal investigation needs to be handled uh, needs to be handled by the marshal of the Supreme Court. And if there's a criminal referral that comes out of this, you send it to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington D.C., and they can look at potential criminal charges. They can look at theft of government property or misuse of government property, maybe obstruction of justice. Uh, there are certainly uh, potential felonies involved here uh, for whoever did this. Uh, Mike, if if, uh, if but the marshal's office for the Supreme Court. Who's in charge of that? Like when there, Pelosi was in charge of the Capitol Police, is it the Chief Justice? No, it's it's all nine justices appoint the Marshal of the Supreme Court. So the Marshal okay. is, is there are some officers of the Supreme Court who are appointed by the uh, Chief Justice, like Jeff Manier, the Counselor, who's essentially the Chief of Staff of the Supreme Court. There are other officers, like the Marshal, who's uh, appointed by the full court. Gotcha. Okay, John Schlafly did join us. He was a few minutes late. Uh, John, you want to jump in here? I don't know if you have a, any thoughts. I know you and I were talking earlier today about this, but uh, thoughts or comments or even questions from Mike Davis? Well, hello, everyone. And uh, it's great to hear from Mike uh, with his uh, wisdom on this issue. But one thing that did occur to me was that, of course, this was the first draft by one justice. And no other justice signed it yet. Um, normally, when an opinion of the court comes out, they'll need at least five justices. Normally there's a lot of back and forth from what I understand, edits. Uh, you know, some justice might say, well, you know, well, I'll only join if you, you know, modify this port par portion or delete that portion. And uh, the public will be able to see what happened. And that may be embarrassing. Uh, you know, if the final opinion is watered down, in any way from this strong original draft, you know, that will be apparent to the public. Normally, we don't learn about that. Um, so, of course, we don't know how much of that was done, but we I think we'd expect that there was some of that, and it could uh, be embarrassing to somebody if the final opinion differs substantially from Justice Alito's first draft. And 
So I, you know, I think we need to be cautious about that because what Alito wrote was just, you know, it was 100%, I think, as far as what most of us wanted. But, you know, compromises are usually made in order to get the support of five justices. And that doesn't even count the chief justice, who's uh, kind of out there on his own now. Nobody knows what he's going to do. Uh, and uh, except that Justice, Chief Justice Roberts is, you know, has been has been looking for some kind of compromise. He tried to have some kind of compromise at the uh, oral argument back in December, and then no other justice picked up on his invitation. So uh, this kind of horse trading normally is shielded by confidentiality, but now it's going to come out. And I th so I think there's, I don't know, Mike, uh, there's, I think there's more shoes to drop here. Uh, there, there's well, there's more that? visibility yeah. to the court now than we have had in the past. Yeah, how do you, reach out, how do you react to that, Mike, in the sense that there is gonna now be able, you're gonna be able to read the tea leaves a little bit, right? I mean, uh, I, I saw again on Twitter, I think you were, I think you were in your Irish state of mind last night when you said, you know, they should just publish the Alito opinion now as the opinion of the court, because, you know, you're going to have to get into this sort of uh, uh, problem of what is the what is the final draft and who did what to it and all the rest. Right. Uh, but I mean, I, it's pretty clear they're not doing that. So how do you think this how, how should we understand what's playing out and how should we maybe push back on it to, to try to, again, save the uh, preserve the integrity of the court? Well, it's very clear that the Alito opinion was the draft majority opinion for the for at least five justices on the Supreme Court as determined at conference, because it had as its header the opinion of the court. So that was the uh, presumably the first draft of the majority opinion. I don't know if there was a second draft. I don't know if there were edits. I don't know why, if there were subsequent drafts, why they leaked out this draft and not subsequent drafts. But the the issue is that this draft is out there now, and uh, it. it the, 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 the like like we just discussed if you have edits to this draft you're going to see the give and take of the supreme court and you don't want that to be public that shatters trust among the justices and that's just part of the the internal court deliberations that should never be made public um so i do think that the court should immediately issue an opinion even if it's a per curiam decision saying that this is how we're ruling the opinions will follow or even if they issue a majority opinion by Justice Alito, and then they say that concurring and dissenting opinions will follow. They need to get this out there because right now, uh, too many people, uh, too many crazy people out there and crazy, including crazy left wing protesters who are showing up to the Supreme Court and making threats, think that they may be able to take the law into their own hands, right? And that just cannot happen. Now, these justices have protection, but we just cannot risk the safety of justices right now on this monumental case that have all the left wing uh, people so stirred up and making such vicious threats. I mean, we had Senator Schumer as a as the top Democrat senator going over to the Supreme Court uh, and threatening justices by name. We have we have activists, their activist followers going to Justice Thomas's house, Justice Kavanaugh's house. I mean, this is this is dangerous, and this is dangerous that this leaked out. Not only dangerous to the uh, to the uh, to the independence of the Supreme Court of the United States is it's dangerous to these justices personally if people think that they have a shot at, at changing the outcome of of this decision by taking the law into their own hands they need to get this decision out they can write the opinions later well my, Mike is that you, you again you and without we're giving away any um, uh, any um, confidences and I don't I don't I don't have any in, in, I, you and I haven't talked until we got on this call together so I texted you to see if you'd come on but um, in your experience, just your experience, is that possible or even likely? Could could they do what you just said? I mean, and and if the, if if the five wanted to, could they say we just want this now because we don't want to be put in a position where we spend the next eight or ten weeks with worrying about someone who thinks they can be a hero by doing something truly evil? It, is it possible? Yeah, yeah, they they could. They've done, they've done it before where they've put out. Uh, decisions with uh, with opinions to follow, and they can certainly do that. Um, and I think that they should in this case, because this this is an unprecedented leak from the Supreme Court. So they should take this extraordinary step to 
to punch back against this this assault, this internal assault on judicial independence, uh, and this in, internal security threat to the to the personal safety of the justices. They need to punch back hard, uh, and they need to they need to send a, a very strong message to anyone in the future that if you do something like this, there are going to be serious consequences. You're not going to get the political result that you want or the legal result you want. And there's also going to be serious legal ramifications. You're going to get disbarred. You're going to get fired. You're going to get prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Uh, Mike, one of our Eagles texted me and said, uh, Stan, uh, our great Stan Casasso up in Philadelphia, but I can, I know where I think the answer will go. He said, will there be, could there be a, um, a, a commission uh, uh, to dig into this? Uh, you know, like they've done with other, um, you know, kangaroo courts, the January 6th kangaroo court select committee. But your, your answer to that is the court has to get to it on its own first. If Congress wants to do something about how we end up with this, you would, you would not prefer that there's, a, and I think you probably say there is a constitutional problem with Congress subpoenaing witnesses to try to get to the bottom of its workings, right? That doesn't work. Yeah, this, the political branches need to stay the heck out of this. They're, they're just... They're political clowns. You saw Schumer and Pelosi put out their political clown statement. The January 6th commission is a clown card. They need to stay out of this and let the adults at the Supreme Court handle this. This is the first time that an opinion has leaked like this. Uh, this the Chief Justice put out a statement the next day. This, this leaked out at night. The Chief Justice put out a, state, a very strong statement today uh, condemning this and saying that that the marshal of the Supreme Court is going to fully investigate this. Uh, that needs to that needs to happen, and they don't need any help from any clowns in the political branches. Uh, the Supreme Court is perfectly e equipped to handle this, and um, the only next step I would urge the Supreme Court to do again is to issue this opinion, even if they issue a per curiam opinion saying how they're going to rule with the majority concurring dissenting opinions to follow. They need to get this out there, rip the band-aids off, and show people that you're not gonna you're not gonna obstruct the proceedings of the Supreme Court. Uh, John Schlafly, did I cut you off? I I just realized that maybe you were still asking a question. Do you have a further comment? No, that that's quite all right, Ed. But I I would just point out that this incident comes in the context of a campaign by the left to attack and undermine the conservative justices. There's been a you know a scurrilous campaign against Justice Thomas. Uh, raising, you know, bogus questions uh, against him on account of his Ginny's political activities, even to the point of, you know, acting in the New York Times suggested there was something wrong because Justice Thomas had re re accepted an award from Phyllis Schlafly in 1996. You know, so his participation and vote is crucial to this. And so we need to be on guard and protect the justices against this attack on their independence, and particularly protect just Justice Thomas, I would say. We've got to keep him in our minds and our prayers. Um, thanks, John. Um, Mike, I got a text from one of our Eagles uh, also um, saying, how, how could you release a February opinion in May? In other words, you know, what, the way they position it, that it's a February draft opinion if you don't know the inner workings of the Supreme, or not the inner workings, if you don't know how the Supreme Court works, it sounds like that's unfinished. You know, if you're, it's a draft from February, it was going to be released in June. Uh, somebody forgot to do spell check and, you know, we didn't do anything on it. She, you know, does that, is that, so that's the question one of our Eagles had. I think that if I, if, and I, I have no inside knowledge, I don't talk to Justice Gorsuch, any justice, any, any law clerk, any court employee about pending cases ever. I think that's highly inappropriate. And it just doesn't happen. I don't, <clears throat> this is just so unprecedented what has happened here, but I would say this, how it generally works is there's a majority opinion that circulates. It may be, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe four justices, maybe five justices join justice Alito's majority opinion. And I presume that they're just waiting for the dissenting opinions, uh, opinion or opinions from the, from the th three liberal justices from oral argument, it seemed like there were five votes to overturn Roe and Casey. I think that uh, from oral argument, Chief Ju the Chief Justice, I don't know, I don't know if he was certain he wanted to overturn Roe or Casey, but I think he wanted to uphold the state's abortion restriction. And I think the three justices wanted to uphold Roe and Casey and overturn the state restriction. So I think that that's how this is going to play out. 
Uh, I actually think by leaking this, the way that that this rogue employee leaked this, I actually think it may pull the chief justice into a six to three majority opinion. Uh, Mike, one quick follow up on that. To be clear, I, I thought, and I so I, I and I only I only clerked for the Court of Appeals, the Eighth Circuit, so I, I don't have as much insight as you do. Although I know you started out on the Tenth Circuit, out where we you know the great unwashed were. But I, <laughs> I assumed that February was I assumed that February was too early, meaning a, a December vote and then in February a draft would likely be for comments and all. You're saying it's totally plausible that that was the that was the majority opinion. Pretty much, you know. I know you don't know anything, but you're saying don't be don't be confused by the uh, the earliness that is February. That could well have been the opinion uh, that everybody had agreed to, and and he was sending it over so the dissenters could have the framework to dissent. Yeah, it it could be, or it could be that there are comments going back and forth among the majority. Who knows? But I would say if you read the opinion, it is a thorough, brilliant, well reasoned, bulletproof opinion. So I mean. If, if you're in a if you're in the five or maybe six justice majority on this case, I mean, I don't know how much comment you're really going to have. Justice Alito is brilliant, and I think he covered everything. Well, if I may, you know, the, 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 they usually wait for the dissenters, the dissenting judges to finish their dissent. And in this case, you know, Justice Breyer, who's retiring, uh, and he's Breyer has been the lead dissenter on many of the abortion cases, and he may regard his dissenting opinion in this case as the capstone of his career, and he may produce a 200-page opus ready ready to be published in book form uh, as he leaves the court. And um, so that could be the reason. That could be what they're waiting for. And uh, anyway, but. You know, they're waiting for the, the, you know, the dissenters to finish. Yeah, yeah, I think they Mike, are. Mike, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I, I definitely think they're waiting for the dissenters. And then once the dissenters write their dissent, then the majority, uh, the, the person, the justice writing the majority responds to the dissenters. They respond to any concurring um, opinions that there may be. Um, there could be concurring opinions where they concur in the results, but they don't agree with the, the reasoning. They could be, there could be concurring opinions that just want to add to the majority opinion and agree with everything the majority opinion says and just add more. Um, but this, I mean, this, uh, the, if you, re, again, if you read Justice, uh, Justice Alito's draft majority opinion, it is, I mean, it's ready for prime time. It, you know, you have to wait for the dissenting and, the, and concurring opinions, but it's, it's, it, could, it could go out the door. It could have gone out the door in February. Um, so let me finish by just saying this. First of all, thank you, Mike uh, Davis, for being um, with us and also for helping us with um, in so many ways along the last couple of years on understanding the fight over judges, uh, understanding the importance of the nomination process, a lot of different aspects. It's been really uh, a great service to us, Mike. So thank you for that. Thank you for being on now. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, I think we'll just let it go then. Thank you again for joining. Mike, thanks for everything. We'll be back in touch. Thanks, thank Mike. You. All the best. See ya.